I am glad that you are here. Amen. Amen. Nothing is like being in the presence of God's men. Amen. In the midst of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the prayer was going forth and I am excited about it. Hallelujah. We're going to take the time that God allows this morning. Amen. Yes, Let's all turn in the Bibles this morning to our, our theme chapter. And that's going to be from Acts chapter 6, verse 3. Yes, now we're going to actually going to start at 13. Amen. Thank God for everyone. Thank God for Elder Isaac Quick there. Amen. And Pastor Parker and Pastor Cooper and everybody. Thank God for each and every one of you encouraging one another. When I see you, you encourage me. Amen. Amen. Nothing just like seeing another person and another brother succeed. Right. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. When I see your face, I'm encouraged every amen. single day. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. If you have one, thank God for the superintendent. Hallelujah. Gates for being with us today. Amen. Everybody has St. John chapter 14. And um, yeah. hallelujah. I'm going to start reading from, thank God for my first assistant here, hallelujah, been with us this, this morning, hallelujah, Superintendent Stone, thank God for him, amen, amen. You have St. John chapter 14, verse 13. Everybody say, Amen. 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 And it says here, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. And he shall ask, and you shall ask anything in my name, and I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. That as Elder, uh, well, due to the direction of our bishop and as Elder Anthony Wilson had given me the theme, yes. the need for men to have the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. That when I heard the theme, I said, wait a minute, hold on. The need. The need. Because yes, sometimes you can hear a theme and you misunderstand it. But the theme is, we need him. We need him. The theme is, we need him. Amen. And when I went to the text, and I began to hear Jesus as he began to talk about how the Father is in him, and he is in the Father, and their relationship within the Godhead, yes, sir. Uh -huh. that he begins to speak about that the Holy Spirit is going to be sent to us as a promise from the Father. Because the fact is, God has always intended that we be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes, yes. It is not a Pentecostal notion. Right. It's not a Church of God in Christ notion. Right. It has always been God's plan right. to fill a man right. with the Holy Ghost. Right. Yes, amen. Yes, sir. Ever since the, the garden, when he breathed the breath of life into Adam, and he says he became a living soul or a you know, a human being, or he, he became aware right. of himself. Mm, yes, sir. But it says of Jesus, who is the second Adam, that he is a quickening spirit or a life-giving spirit, that he makes us aware unto God. That has always been God's plan always. to fill us with the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That we must always understand that it's been God's intent. Everybody say, God mean to do this. It's not something that just happened when I got the church. It's, it's always been what he's desired for me. Right. That the Bible begins to let us know that in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit, as we would see him move, 
would come upon individuals for task. Like kings and to you know, set captives free and fight wars and to help men prophesy. And he, he would come upon them and then he would lift. He would not abide. He would be there just to promote redemptive history. What God is doing in the world and the Holy Ghost is moving it forward. Huh? But that is not God's main intent is to do things externally from us. His main intent was to do something through us. That's exactly what he wants us to know. That everywhere that the, the, the children of Israel would travel in the wilderness, they would take the tabernacle with them. Huh? That everywhere they would go, they would set up, they would put the tabernacle there, and all the particulars that are in the temple, they would put there, and they would set it up, they would break it down, and then they would move forward. And everywhere they would go, they would put the tabernacle at the center, if I say the center, of the entire nation and that every nation is to face the tabernacle and no matter what they were and how they were and what happened it was to always be an indication and sign to them that God is always in the midst of them that no matter what country they were in God was with them and he is to face them. Everybody's house is to face the temple. Everybody's family is to face the temple. Everybody is to look at the presence of God. And it says, and, it, and it's a sign to us because it says of our God, as it says of Jesus, that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hallelujah. And we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father. The Bible says, right there, we, he, he dwelt among us. The Bible, the, the, the translation means he tabernacled among us. Yeah. He pitched his tent. Oh, yeah. Which meant that he came into our wilderness area and set up shop. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. He came to where our weakness was and said, I'm going to move in where you are. And where we are, wherever you move, I will move with you. And the Bible said we will beheld him as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He pitched his tent with us. He was the presence of God with us. I say Jesus, Jesus was God with us. He is Emmanuel. Hallelujah. But the Bible begins to let us know, as Paul begins to let us know in the, in the first Corinthians, that we now are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Hallelujah. Which, is, which ye are, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with the price. Therefore glorify God with your body and with your spirit, for ye are God's. That our individual person is now the location of the presence of God. That God's intent before all creation is to make sure that each individual has the presence of God in it. Hallelujah. Everybody say, God with me. Hallelujah. It has always been God's plan. And even in the Old Testament, Jeremiah 31 and 33 says this. But this is the covenant which I make with the house of Israel. After those days, declares the Lord, I will put my law within them and in their hearts. And I will write it upon, hallelujah, and I will, I will be their God and I, will, and I will be, and they will be my people. And they, and they will not teach again each man his neighbor and each man his brother, saying, know ye the Lord. For they will all know me. That Ezekiel 22 and 30 says, And I sought for a man among you, that you should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me in the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. But the Bible has been letting us know that what God has been doing in all of redemptive history is looking for a man full of the Holy Ghost. About say he's been looking for a man full of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say full of the Holy Ghost. That Ezekiel 36 and 26 says, Moreover, I will give you a new heart 
and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. Oh my and we all know jo Joel 2 and 28. And it, and it will come about after this, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy. And your old men will dream dreams. And your young men will see visions. That the purpose of the Holy Ghost is to move forward God's plan in the earth. Everybody says it's to move forward God's plan. That he came upon Solomon and he would come upon David and he would come upon Samson and he would even come upon uh, uh, Basileo and uh, Aholiab just to, for purposes of designing the temple. But God said, I don't need you just to do a few things here and there. I need to be with you at all times. And he wants to move in and stay, if I say permanently. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because Jesus' ministry in the earth realm could not fully be moved forward without the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That his birth is even, you know, the concept of it. His, his whole person comes by the Holy Ghost. Everybody say the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. That Luke 3 and 22 says the Holy Spirit descended in body form like a dove upon him. And the voice came from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That at the beginning of his earthly ministry, the Holy Ghost lets us know this is God's man. That before we get going with what God has for us to do, everybody say we need the approval of the Holy Ghost. We do. We do. Hallelujah. And it says in Luke 4 and 14, Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and the news of him went throughout the, all the surrounding regions, that when he came out of the wilderness, everybody say he was led out, he was led out. by the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. That Romans 8 and 11 says this, But if the Spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. That even the resurrection that we praise cannot happen without the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That he says, and if you're going to get up off the grave also, you're going to need the Holy Ghost. Yes, Tell the person beside her, I need the Holy Ghost. That the theme is the need for men to have the Holy Ghost. That I remember when I came to the, the sanctified church, because, you know, I grew up in the church and I left the church and then I came into one of those little small sanctified churches where they don't care where you come from. They ain't trying to get nothing from you other than your soul. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and I came out of a club trying to sing at some club. And then I walked into a church and sat on that little prickly, you know, it's got splinters in the bench and uh, got the one light bulb and... And the man and woman of God said, well, let, let me hear what you have, Brother Leek. And they let me give my testimony. And uh, I gave my testimony and I sang my song and I did everything I could do. I was as, as impressive as you can imagine. And as the, the song went on and I sat down, what happened was it was kind of like a dead silence. Well, <laughs> Somebody know what this silence yes, may be like. And when I sat down... The, 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 the woman of God got up and she, at that time she was about like 65, I'm about 22. And she, she said, you know what? Thank you. God bless you. Wonderful brother Lee. <laughs> Amen. And when she got up and she started singing, you know, you know, blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. And she sang it in this broken voice. And she sang it with this broken spirit. And this mind of worship toward Jesus and all around me, people start yelling and screaming, and people were being delivered all around me. And my ego that was inflated became deflated. And I began to shriek over in that little corner as though I had come into the presence of God. And she didn't say nothing to me. The man of God didn't say nothing to me. They say, well, God bless you, man of God. But just come back out to the Bible study and come back out to the prayer. Because they said quietly under their voice, 
son, you need the Holy Ghost. Somebody tell the person beside you, I need the Holy Ghost. I need the Holy Ghost. Because we live in a culture where talent is on display. Giftedness is on display. A lot of people have a lot of degrees and a lot of influence. And, but in the presence of God, it means absolutely nothing. Hallelujah. If you can do it without God, hallelujah, God is not interested in what you are able to do. Because whatever God requires, requires God. Ain't that what the man of God said? Hallelujah. That he said that you need him to promote the purpose of God in your life. Hallelujah. And so sometimes what happens is we learn how to hide in the church. I learned how to do what they do in church. Hallelujah. I learned how to lift my hands like they lift them in church. I, I learned how to sing like they lift them in church. I, I can hmm like they do in church. And I, I can do a lot of things exactly, identically like them. Uh, you've seen other comedians do it before because it's easy to mimic. Hallelujah. But the Bible does not want us to mimic the Holy Ghost. Everybody say, you can't mimic the Holy Ghost. Because he's going to make you look like a fool. Yes, sir. Yeah. Ask the seven sons of Sceva. Yeah. Hallelujah. They say, Paul, we know. Paul. Jesus, we know. I'm going, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. Hallelujah. But he said, who are you? I don't see the authorized seal of approval on your life. That the Holy Ghost is the one that seals us, that makes us sure that we are authenticated by God the Father. Somebody said, I need to make sure my Holy Ghost is real. I don't want one I can't feel. I don't want one I can't see. I don't want one that can't do nothing. That when he moves, it's undeniable that this is power from God. That it says in 2 Peter 2 and 10 right here, speaking of false prophets and false teachers, he says, but chiefly, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities, whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not and rarely accusation to them before the Lord, but these as natural brute beasts. That he said that they have an arrogance about them, not submitting to the power of God, because receiving the Holy Ghost requires that you submit yourself, that you can only be as full of the Holy Ghost as you are empty of yourself. I got to say that one again. That you can only be as full of God as you are empty of you. Hallelujah. If he is to be glorified, uh, you got to put you on the back burner. It cannot be your will. It cannot be self-will. It has to be the will of God. Everybody said, I'm here to submit to your will, God. This week of the Holy Ghost is about submitting to God's will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That even Jesus tells Nicodemus, I know that you are the famous teacher. I know that you are. I know everybody look at you. And you are in their eyes what they want to be. But he tells him, you must be born again. He said that you must be born from above. That what you need is not from this world. It's not from the people around you. Is not from anything in your earthly realm. What you will have will only come down to assist you. Oh God. Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. Everybody said, I need something bigger, need something bigger. than what's in this world. Yes, yeah. Hallelujah. And he lets them know that the wind bloweth where it listeth. And thou hears the sound of the world, but canst not tell where it come from and whether it goeth. That he lets him know. I can believe that he could just, as he is speaking to Nicodemus, that the wind is actually blowing. Then he said that you see everything moving around. You see the wind blowing. But you don't know where it's coming from. Yeah. That these leaves move at the desire of the wind. 
that the wind does not submit to the will of any leaves or any other thing in all of creation. So are those men who are born of the Spirit. They are moved. Nobody knows where you came from. Nobody knows what you're doing. They don't even know how you're doing it. All they know is you showed up you showed out, and God got the glory. Everybody say, he blew me through it. Everybody say, he blew me through it. He blew me through it. Hallelujah. Because the Holy Ghost is the influence in our lives that moves us. Everybody say, moves us. Into the directions that God wants us to go. Hallelujah. And it helps us to understand who Jesus is. Everybody say, it helps me know Jesus. It helps me to know Jesus. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 12 and 2 says, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God call of Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord except but by the Holy Ghost. That unless Jesus is in your lips and in your heart, Lord, that he is God in your heart then I doubt the Holy Ghost is there that he said that only the Holy Ghost can say such a thing hallelujah and it says in John 16 and 13 how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth everybody say he leads me into truth he will not speak of himself he said the Holy Ghost doesn't speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me. Jesus said the Holy Ghost, when he comes, he's going to make you know things about Jesus yes, that you have not considered. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. That's right. He's going to take you beyond your Sunday school lesson. Yes, sir. That he's going to bring Jesus in 3D. Good. Yes, sir. He's going to make him crystal clear yes, to you. Right. He's going to reveal every mystery about the son to his son. Because God's purpose and interest is that Jesus or Christ be formed in you. Everybody say he's being formed in me. Because the Holy Ghost is here so that Christ can be formed in us. Everybody say he's being formed in me. He's being formed in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say he seals me. Hallelujah. Everybody say he seals me. Everybody say, he calls me to have an authentication about my life. Yes, Hallelujah. Somebody say, keep it real. God said, but I need you to be real, man. Yes, Everybody said, I need, I need to be real. The Holy Ghost makes sure that we are real. Because sometimes we get knockoff material. You know, right. I mean, hold on. wait a minute, knock off. You know, somebody get, you know, you might get some Nikes. There's some Nokies. You know what I'm saying? You know, but it's all stand right now for our. Our jurisdictional bishop right now is thank God for him. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless his name. Yes, God. Hallelujah. That the Holy Spirit. Oh, amen. Bless his name. God bless you, Bishop. Amen. That the Holy Spirit authenticates. Everybody say it authenticates. It makes your walk with God real. It makes your walk with God real. Everybody say it makes my walk with God real. It takes it out of the realm of theory and hypothesis and puts it in the realm of experience and being a partaker of the power of God. The Bible call talks about us being partakers of the divine nature. That he wants us to be connected to what God is doing. Amen. That God is not about doing something apart from us, but he has always been in the business of making sure he does things inclusive of what we are. And to do it through us. Yeah. We're waiting on God to do a miracle on this side. But God said, no, the miracle is when I do it through you. Yeah. The miracle is when I change you. That I'm not going to save your son and you not pray. I'm not going to do something in your life and you not fast. I'm not going to do something in your life and you not experience the goodness of God. Because what the Holy Ghost does, everybody say, it takes us off the bench. And it puts us in the game. Everybody say, it takes me off the bench. And it puts me in the game. See, anybody that been on one of them teams, say, everybody wasn't a great player all the time. 
and you've been practicing all week. But the Holy Ghost takes you off the bench and says, it's your time, Zone. It's your time, Gates. I need you to get in. I need you to get in and I need you to contribute your time to what's going on in your family. Hallelujah. Everybody say, he helps me to get involved with what's going on. Everybody say, he regenerates me. That in Titus 3 and 5 it says, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. By the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Everybody say, he renews me. He regenerates me. Hallelujah. He blesses me. He seals me. He regenerates me. Hallelujah. And everybody say, he sanctifies me. Because not only does he get you in the game, but he got a position for you to play. See, you, you can't be in the game unless you know what your position is. See, everybody trying to be, you know, everybody can't be the center. Everybody can't, you know, you know we, we have positionless basketball now. But they ain't positionless, nothing in the kingdom of God. Everything got a position in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. That in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 3 says, for this is the will of God. Everybody looking for your purpose right now? Everybody looking for your purpose? I'm about to give it to you right now. He said, even your sanctification. He said, I ain't got nothing else for you. The only thing, brothers, that God has for you is to set your life aside for specific purposes and God's use and to remove it from uncommon use where everybody can use you for all kind of things. God said, you don't do all kind of things. You do the one thing I tell you to do. And that sanctifying work comes by the Holy Ghost. Everybody say, comes by the Holy Ghost. It comes by the Holy Ghost. So, brothers, we know right now, and I'm ending here, that we need the Holy Ghost. Because it's God's will. It's God's plan. It's God's desire. It's God's purpose. That even in Acts chapter 1 where Jesus comes back from the dead. The famous Jesus. He has now been beaten to a bloody mess. He's been buried in a borrowed tomb. And he has gone down to hell. And he's taken away the keys of hell, death, and the grave. And now he comes back just to have a conversation. And he shows up with the disciples just to be with them. To teach them just for a little while. But then he gets there, and they are so excited to see him. They're like, you know what? If you come back from the dead, can't nobody stop us. They singing, us, can't, ain't no stopping us now. Huh? They singing, can't no, you know, y'all know that song. Let me just, listen, listen, that he said, that they are looking at him about to high five everybody. Talking about, we back on top, brothers. Come on, James, we back. Peter, we back. Come on, they telling each other, we on top. Rome don't know what's about to hit them. They don't know. Caesar don't know. We got Jesus. Come on, somebody already had on me. But Jesus looking at them, and he looking at them, and he looking at this conversation, and he just stops in the middle and says, wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's stop all the high-fiving, brothers, because I'm getting ready to go. He said, but I need you to wait. Everybody said, I need to wait because I need something else. He tells them that you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Then you shall be what? Witness. And he uses the Greek word witness for the word martyr. Oh, oh, now, 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 now he said this because he's already been to the cross. He's been in the grave. He's back to life. He know exactly what it takes to get you through it all. And he's looking at Peter, James, and John, and all of the disciples. He said, brothers, you don't even know what road you on. That in order to do what God is requiring of you, you need to see yourself as a martyr. The difficulties that will be in your life require that you have the Holy Ghost in power and demonstration. Because when you get down the road and you are discouraged and you feel pain in your body and you feel like you are alone, you need the comforter to speak to your mind and let you know that Jesus is still Lord. 
Then he said, I know you're ready to run out of here. But he said, but before you run out of here, I need you to know that's an upper room for you. And I need you to get there. And I need you to wait. I need you to wait. Because God has to finish the work inside of you. And what he requires from you right now is to fulfill what the word of God says that he would fulfill. Is that he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And he wants you to be his witness. That no matter what Rome says, no matter what the Jews said, no matter what your own feelings say, that you would remind yourself every day by pulling your sometimes everybody say you got to pray in the Holy Ghost to yourself. Because the Bible said the man who prays in tongues, he edifies himself. Yes, I know we're praying in the Holy Ghost when we get here. Yeah. But God said, I need you to pray at home. Yeah. Come on. Somebody, before you go in that boat, I'm by vocation. If you got to go in that boardroom uh -huh. with that meeting where you know the whole department is about to fall apart, yeah. how about you go speak in tongues in your own cubicle? Yeah. I need you to pray by the devil. I need you to pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray over the circumstances. I need you to have power before you go in there. So when you come in there, you don't come in there trembling or upset about what's going on. Because the Holy Ghost, he brings comfort to you. He said, I'm called alongside you to help you. He's your counsel in the midst of it all. He's able to help you to accomplish God's will. He gets you from where you started to where God wants you to be. He's the one that when you feel like falling down, he picks you back up and says, hold on, wait a minute, hold on, wait a minute, stop, stop, stop right here. He said, we keep going here. Hallelujah. And nobody else can encourage you, but the Holy Ghost is there. Like you can't, somebody say, you know, we're having mental illness. He said, no, but I got the Holy Ghost. I got him. He's here to help my mind. He's here to help my spirit. He's here to strengthen me in my inner man. The Bible says he strengthens us with might in the inner man. Hallelujah. That when they come out, they are under the understanding that everybody that does work in the kingdom of God must be full of the Holy Ghost. Thus, the men's ministry. Acts 6. Says, wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men full of honest report. Everybody say, full of the Holy Ghost. Which means that it should be discernible. I should be able to see it. He said, I want you to see seven men full. They ain't got to see you no resume. Because the fullness lets me know you overflow. Come on, come on. Somebody needs to say amen. amen. Hallelujah. That God wants it to be full of his glory. Hey, hey. Now I'm new. But he wants us to be full. And we need the Holy Ghost. Everybody say, I need you, God. I need you. See, the men, that man, that's a, that's a thing that we got to say, brothers. That when we get in that circumstance and our wives, they say, what are we doing, honey? Said, I'm going to let you know in one moment because we don't want to tell them right now because we don't have an answer. And they say, now you're bugging me. Hold on, wait a minute. You say, but they don't understand. I can't come with an answer until I have the answer. I ain't gonna make up no answer. But at that time, that's when you get to the side and say, God, I need you. My son needs you. My, my daughter needs you. I, I need you on my job. Before I get in this truck, before I get in this office, before I get down to that church, wherever I go, I need He said, that's my man, that's my man right there. That's him. He need me. That's my man right there. And he said, and when you say I need you, and you wait on me, he said, then I come in. And he said, and only in your weakness is his strength just right for the, for the situation. He said, now we need him. Somebody say, we need him. All right, I'm done. Amen. Come on, bless the name of the Lord.